And now, Pursuit. Pursuit. A criminal strikes and fades quickly back into the shadows of his own dark world. And then the man from Scotland Yard, the famous inspector Peter Black, and the dangerous, relentless pursuit. When man hunts man. Now, with Ben Wright starred as the famous inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard, we bring you tonight's story, Pursuit of the Thames Pirates. Chap's got a date. A ready business like this comes up. Not fair. I'm going to resign. Yes, sir? No, Moffitt. Yes, sir? Uh, we're going on the river tonight. Thames Division. Oh, sir? But, Mr. I Moffitt... can't help it. Inspector Trevallion just called. I had a date, too. I'll meet you outside. Yes, sir. Uh, hello. This is, uh, uh, Peter. Oh, Peter, darling. I'll be ready in a half an hour. Um, Anne, I, uh, I... Uh... Yes, I love you madly, but if I keep talking, I'll never get my face on. Anne, I, I'm afraid something's happened that... What? I have to work. No. Oh, no. Yes, I'm afraid so. You mean we're not going out? I'm terribly sorry. Oh, Peter. Uh, look, here, I must run, but may I call you later? Well, I don't know. I might be home and I might not. I'm very angry with you, Peter. This is the first Well, time. I'm so sorry, really, Anne. Well, you might have called earlier. I, uh... You ready, sis? Oh, uh, Muffet, uh, yes. Well? Uh, uh, may I call you later? Oh, I suppose so. Uh, yes. Well, um, thanks very much. Goodbye. Uh, all right. Come on, Muffet. Keep your eye on the port quarter. Over there, near the dock? Yes. See? Yeah. It doesn't seem to be moving. Well, she is, though. No lights. Makes it hard to tell. Probably cut their motor. Peters. Aye, sir. Port quarter. When I give the word, switch on the search. I want to have a look at that boat. Aye, aye, sir. It's funny we didn't see them slip past Trevelyan. Might have moved around the barge anchored over there. Not much visibility tonight, anyway. Well, I think we ought to move in closer. Oh, not yet, old boy. They're the ones they'd slip out. Whatever they've got is too fast for us. All right, Peter, switch on. Start your engine, Macintosh. Start engine, sir. Are you served on one of those, didn't you, Trevelyan? Oh, something like it. It could be a Thornycroft MTB. A little small, though. Ahoy! Motorboat. I'm coming aboard. He's two. Half speed ahead, McIntosh. Half speed, sir. Hello, she's swinging about. She's not going to stop. How to stop it, McIntosh? She's trying to ram. Look out. Get down to value. The Metropolitan Police Force had been on the alert for a gang of waterfront thieves. They had been in operation for over a year, but during the past three weeks had enlarged operations to such an extent that every available man had been sent to the docks vicinity. Ten division launches had intensified their patrols, and still we had not been able to put a stop to the piracy. We knew that they were using a high-powered motorboat, and further, they chose foggy or moonless nights for their attack. However, that night, we found them with a vengeance. I was flat on my face trying to bury myself in the deck of a bouncing police launch while a machine gun bullet whipped over me. Uh, 
You all right, Black? Oh, happy as a lark. I couldn't think of a nicer way to spend an evening. What about you, Moffitt? Wish I had a pump on, sir. Yes, I know what you mean. Peter, get on the wireless. The whopping. Tell them we've made contact with a craft. Uh, MTP. That'll be close enough. Heading up river. Ask them to intercept. Close the Teddington lock. Aye, aye, sir. Macintosh. Bird engines. Full throttle. Aye, sir. This or not, we're begging for trouble. I mean, this speed in fog. Oh, they're doing it. We've got to catch them. All right, I'll take the wheel, Macintosh. Very good, sir. Can't see a blessed thing. Where are we? Oh, half a tick. Greenwich Reach. Isle of Dogs over there. Oh, yes. Oh, that chap got nerve. Must know where he's going. I hope you do. Oh, nothing to it, old boy. Just so long as we don't hit a barge or a log or something like that. How fast are we going? 30. Feels like 60. If we hit anything, it won't make any difference. Well, you're a cheerful soul. I say, how did you know they'd try it tonight? I didn't. But it's been eight days since the last one. It's the first foggy night since then. No, just a hunch. Oh. Well, do you think we can catch them? I don't know. Try, though. You like machine guns? <laughs> if I'm behind them, I don't mind. <laughs> Always have one aboard for emergencies. Might have to use it. Ah, uh, just like the old days, hmm? Uh, rather... Peters and I told Peter to German patrol boat in an MTB. <laughs> Nothing like it. Ah, uh-huh. except an office at the yard. Oh, sedentary swine. Look out! Oh, that was close, wasn't it? I wish this ruddy fog would lift. Yeah, so do I. But it didn't. We kept on. The same incredible speed. Trevelyan must have known the river by heart. He had to because I know he could barely see it. The pirate boat was somewhere in front of us and we rolled and slapped in his wake. TD2 passed the divisional base at Wapping, Tower Bridge, London Bridge, Waterloo. Once we thought we saw a dark shape ahead as the fog cleared for a moment, but it quickly closed in again. We were rowing onto Putney Bridge when Peters brought a wireless message. From Wapping, sir. Huh? No luck, sir. One of the launches saw him go by, but he was too fast for him. Ah, uh, he's too fast for us, too. If that isn't a converted phonic craft, I'll eat it. Well, how far do you think he'll run? Uh, who knows? We can't hide one of those things very well. We're bound to spot it sooner or later. My dear old thing, we've known for at least six months that they're using a boat. No one's ever seen it. Now we have. But if we give them 24 hours, they can change the line so that you'll look like a houseboat. Oh, why don't you and Sergeant Moffat hop up to the bow with a gun? If you see anything, have a pot at it. Oh, charming fellow. You're safe behind the wheel. They shoot back and we get it. <laughs> exactly. It'll give you something to think about, eh? Peter, bring out a couple of reefer jackets. Aye, sir. Can't have overcoats and bowlers on my ship, Black. <laughs> Make a seaman of you yet. I doubt it. Moffat doubts it, too. Look at him. By the time we reached Q, there was no longer any sign of our quarry's wake. Trevelyan was forced to slow down when a tug furiously screamed a warning and literally scraped by, dragging a string of small barges. Across deep, the fog lifted a bit, enough so that we could see only darkness ahead of us. There was no sign of the pirate. All right, they've sewn themselves up. We'll get them now. How? Teddington Locks ahead. You can see the light. It's like a blind alley for them. They might try to double back. Well, they won't get far if they do. See any signs of them, Peters? No, sir, not yet. Well, keep a sharp lookout. Aye, sir. I say. Yes? The locks. Don't they look rusty? Lost. Why, they're open. What the devil's the matter with those fools? Well, you think they didn't get the message? Why, of course they did. Somebody's going to roast for this. Peters! Stand by with the bow line. We're going to run in for a minute. Right, sir. Uh, not much use going on, eh? Uh, they must have better than a half mile lead on us. Oh, double block. Half speed, Macintosh. Aye, sir. Next lock's at Hampton Court. We'll signal ahead to close them. Ah, what filthy luck. Yes. And then I want to have a little talk with the gentleman in charge of the locks here. Not 
going to be so easy now. Why, there's a hundred places for them to hide along the river, even if we catch them before Hampton Court. You know, they might have pulled into shore before they even got here. Doubtful we could have seen them in that fog. Yes, I know. Uh, now, where the devil's that locks, master? Hello! Say, you smell something. Huh? Oh, yeah? Cordite? Cordite. Well, good Lord, look. Oh. Now he's not dead that he's not going to wake up for a long time. He must have found the locks closed. Came up here, forced him to open them, and... Oh, the poor devil. Well, I'll have Peters get him some help. Yes, and send out a general alarm. Cover the river from here up to Oxford. Now, what about Hampton Court locks? I have wireless for a police guard. That is, if they haven't already got through. Oh, they couldn't. And as far as we could determine, some hour or so later, they hadn't passed beyond Hampton Court. Now, except for the River Mole, which emptied into the Thames, we had approximately ten miles of river to search. Somewhere between the Teddington Lock and Hampton Court, there was a powerful motor launch, equipped with machine guns, and carrying a crew whom we now knew might not stop at murder. The one thing over which we had little control was the possibility that they would abandon the boat and escape by road. So I ordered a cordon set up on both sides of the river with the hope that we might forestall such an effort. It was going to be a long night. And so when we docked again to take another machine gun aboard, I made a phone call. Hello? Hello, Anne. Peter. I just cried myself to sleep. Where are you? Uh, uh, Teddington, on the river. Now, what are you doing there? Looking for pirates. Very funny. No, it isn't, Anne. They've almost killed a man. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Peter. I thought I might be able to drop by for a moment or two tonight, but... Oh, it's all right. Take care of yourself, won't you? Yes. We'll make it tomorrow night, okay? Yes, I'd love to. I miss you. Call me in the morning, huh? Good night, Peter. Good night. Well, you ready? Yes, I'm coming. Coffee, sir? Huh? Oh, thank you. You, sir? Oh, thanks, Peters. Sergeant? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> it might settle you, Moffat. That's what I'm afraid of, sir. For good and all. Hello, what's that? Macintosh, get the search back on it. You just passed something. Oh, I see, sir. Could be the same one. Hard to tell. No, no, I know. She's anchored stern on. Let's have a look. Oh, take that gun on the bow, Peters. Right, sir. Keep the search steady on her, Macintosh. What do you think? Well, same lines, all right. Of course, there's more than one converted MTB on the river. Yeah. You want me to hop over with a line? No, yeah, will you? We'll keep you covered from here. All right, kind of you. Close enough. In a sec. All serene. Oh, smelly tub. Uh, fish. Anybody aboard? Oh, cabin board. Decks haven't been scrubbed in a month of Sundays. Well, they could have rowed to shore if they carry a dinghy. Uh, there's something funny about her. Should carry lights anchored in midstream. Yes. Now, where the devil's the switch? Now, wait a minute, I'm... Don't turn it on and don't turn around. Now, drop your guns. I said drop them. All right. Now, we're going to have a little talk. If anybody raises his voice, he's going to be killed very quickly. Hi, 
Hi, fellas. Care to join me in a quick look at the past? Okay, here goes. Back around, well, maybe no one did at 1890, but someone definitely has since then. Our United States weatherman. He's quite a busy gentleman who works for the Department of Commerce. His job is to read thermometers, barometers, anemometers, and other assorted meters, which forecast weather conditions so the rest of us will know what to plan or what not to plan, like hanging out the wash or going to a baseball game. Information about weather conditions is also given to aircraft pilots and ship captains so they can plan their flights or cruises accordingly. Of course, they need more than just weather data, and the Commerce Department gives them what they need. For the pilots, the department issues aviation charts and maps and sees to it that air markers are laid out so that the pilots can find their way easily and safely. For the ship captains, the Commerce Department issues nautical charts and tide tables to indicate when and where it will be safe to navigate their ships. The department also inspects the ships to see that they're in perfect operating condition and issues licenses for the operating of the ships. So the next time you look up at the sky and wonder what kind of a day it's going to be, the thought might also cross your mind that many lives and valuable cargo carried by American planes and ships are depending on the United States weatherman who is also looking at the sky. Now, the second act of Pursuit of the Thames Pirates. Trevelyan and I stood in the darkened cabin and under us the boat swayed in the current. For a moment, it was just that. And then a light glowed. And in it, I saw the figure of a man, his hands cupping the bow, allowing only a glimmer to see through. There were four men, two holding Tommy guns. They'd come from a cubicle behind us. Pick up the guns, Ted. First, the blokes on your launch, Copper. Tell them to clear out. How am I going to do that? Any way you want. Well, they won't do it, you know. They better. You can't get away. What's the odds? No more jabber. You, you're a skipper. Get your head up there and tell him to cast off. Your pal can stay down here. Say the wrong thing and I'm going to shoot him. Get up, Ted. All right. Get a move on. And say the right thing. Get me? Well, Black, you better do it. Peter! Aye, sir. Uh, Inspector Black wants a fingerprint man to come out. Aye, sir. Take the boat back to Teddington. Bring a man back with you. Right, sir. You staying aboard? Yes. Shall I send Sergeant Moffitt over? Uh, no, no, he can stay with you. Very good, sir. That's enough. Get back down here. Bob's getting hot. Don't need to cover it anymore, do we? No. Uh, what do we want to keep them with us? Maybe enough thunder blizzard trouble. <coughs> That's what I say, ain't we? Shut up, Pitch. If you'd attend to the motor instead of laying around pottied half the time, we wouldn't have broken down. Shut up. <coughs> you coppers wouldn't have found us, you know that. Just bad luck. Motor conking out. I suppose you realize there may be a murder charge now. If the thing is... Fifteen minutes. Okay. Sit down, both of you. Listen to me. You're our passport, see? We're going to make a run down river. If any locks are closed or we're stopped, it's up to you. Get me? Yes. But the whole police force is out. When it gets light... When it gets light, we start worrying. Meantime... You can worry if you try anything funny. Get me? They tied us up, threw us on a couple of bunks, then went up on deck. We could hear the sounds of repairs going on. It would take the police launch at least an hour or more before it returned. And in the meantime, Trevelyan and I were in a rather awkward position. <laughs> oh, come on, Trevelyan. No, it's Terex. <laughs> You know what you look like. What? <laughs> a turkey, all ready for the oven. Oh? Uh, oh. 
Yes, I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there are a couple of prize idiots walking into a trap like that. Can't move an inch. Can you? No. This is serious. Oh, really? Well, I mean, what are we going to do? Be brave, get killed? Not if I can help it. I've got a date tomorrow night. I'd rather like to keep it. You? Oh, uh, celebrate a woman? Ho, oh, oh, ho, wonder why. Uh, uh, wait a sec. Huh? There's, there's something sharp behind the bunk. I'm, I'm trying to... Yeah. It feels like a tobacco can or something jammed in. Oh? Any luck? Huh? Not yet. Ow! Blast. Oh, never mind the blood. Get those ropes off. Oh, funny fellow. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's torn. It sounds as if they're... Oh, what's the good word? It's cutting through. Yeah, mostly me, but... Fine time to think about it, but uh, you got any bright ideas about what we do once we are out? We got guns, you know. Yes, I know. Oh, come on, get a move on, can't you? Well, Houdini could have done it in half the time. At all, when you were in the commanders, they'd torture about those Oh, put a suck in it. Ah! Oh, good man. Oh, Oh, that wasn't a tobacco tin. Loose razor. Oh, no wonder. Our pigs. <laughs> no sense of humor, you CID boy. Oh, you turn over so I can get at your hands. Right. Yes, sir. Using the razor blade? Yes, I am. Do you feel it? Ouch! Oh, you did that on purpose. Oh, what a thought. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, your feet. Ah. Whew. Oh. My fingers feel like a bunch of bananas. That's better. There we are. Uh, what now? Well, we find something to... Uh... Ah. Oh, one for you, and one for me. <laughs> Jolly. I say, I saw an American film last week. Chap broke a bottle on the bar and went for the other bloke. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> uh, shall we? Uh, no, break it on their heads. It's more sporting. <laughs> Behind the door. Let them get in first. Right you are. It didn't break. The gun. No sooner said the duck. Kitch! All right, Kitch, how do you? Oh, we've got to be careful. The wheel faces the cabin door. Whoever's there will be bound to see us as we come up and shoot first. No, I'd rather not. We've got a couple of machine guns, you know. I know. Um, no, no, wait a bit. They'll come looking for Mr. Ketch here, uh -huh. and we can get them one at a time. Uh, right. Ketch! Ketch! Better go down there. He's probably found a bottle. All right. Here we are. Close your mouth or I'll blow your ears off. Good. Yeah. No gun. No gun. Oh, well, put him away. <laughs> <laughs> I say we are heroic tonight, aren't we? <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> These boys are even sillier than we were. <laughs> well, oh, that's a little more even now. Only two of them up there. Come on, close the door behind you. I'll take the chap at the wheel. Right. Bad, eh? <laughs> well, I, I suppose we'd better turn this thing around and uh, haul out the flotsam. That's <laughs> your job, Trevelyan. The four would-be pirates had disguised the boat as a fisherman. And with alarming ease, combined with tremendous luck, they managed to carry out their series of robberies. The lux master recovered from his injuries, and the men received long sentences for armed robbery. The night following their arrest, I kept my date with Miss Anne Crawford. Pursuit. And the pursuit is ended.
You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? According to historians, no other single man ever did as much for a country as this president did for the United States. After a brilliant military career, he was called from retirement to preside at a federal convention in Philadelphia where he was unanimously chosen president. He was also unanimously re-elected for a second term, but refused to run for a third. Although a Federalist, he named a man from another party, Thomas Jefferson, as Secretary of State. If you don't have his name by now, here are two more clues. During his presidency, the cotton gin was invented and the first census was taken. Who was he? George Washington, first president of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. Pursuit is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis and is written by Anthony Ellis. Music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Ben Wright stars as Inspector Peter Black with Raymond Lawrence as Sergeant Moffat. Featured in tonight's cast were Joseph Kearns, Mary Jane Croft, Dan O'Herlihy, Lou Krugman, Tudor Owen, William Johnstone, and Charles Davis. Invite you to join us next week at this same time when Pursuit will bring you another dramatic story of the famous Inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard, relentlessly hunting down those whose disordered passions breed violence and murder. Another story of man hunting man when we bring you Pursuit. as the famous inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.